Hey folks. Um, I was thinking about this kind of concept for a while where uh, there's a definite sort of point where tanks almost become self self-supporting and um, yeah it kind of goes along with the oh, what's her name Diana Wallstead method um, where really like very little is done with the tank other than adding water and you know feeding occasionally light fish load well I mean even with a heavy fish load you can get a almost self-sustaining tank where everything it it's like a it's like a second cycle like after you finish your cycle and you build up a bunch of bacteria there's also like getting everything balancing out um, I had a really awesome balance in my 10 gallon which made me really sad to take it down I don't think you guys ever saw you might see have seen pictures of it um, of it when it was up and very pretty but yeah it made me sad to take down but you know upgrading to a 55 is a pretty sweet deal too uh, there's one of the baddest in the 55 um, baddest almost exclusively eat live food or frozen bloodworms and the bloodworms aren't actually very good for them so they're uh, a lot better for an established system or like a mature tank. Um, al algae eating fish tend to also go better in a mature setup because they will have algae to graze on, just naturally appearing algae. And I got algae galore in here. Um, but at the same time, I've got flourishing plants. It's not like it's one or the other. The algae hasn't overtaken the plants, and, it's, and it adds to the natural look of it, and really adds to the natural effect of the whole thing, the emulation of nature. That's what we're trying to do, right? So, um, I think, legitimately, dirt helps kind of expedite that uh, maturing process where the tank gets to a better balance. Um, I think Java Moss does that as well because it helps soak up a lot of excess nutrients. Um, Java Moss or duckweed, um, even lotuses too, to some, to some uh, regard. But yeah, pretty much every plant. But duckweed and Java Moss in particular because they can be fairly fast growing and there's generally a lot of it, a lot of them particularly duckweed. Yeah, almost my whole surface in this tank is covered with it. Um, a lot of maturation, I think, is also the creatures that live within within the tanks. This one, I mean, other than the fish, like little invertebrates and the microfauna um, versus the macrofauna, which are the fish or um, like shrimp or whatever. Um, this tank is, I think, almost reaching equilibrium. Uh, there's still a little bit of algae. Maybe I should add some more plants. Probably in the back, but as plants grow, as algae grows, as the duckweed, you know, covers up the surface. Yeah, algae's gonna go away. And, I mean, there should always be a little bit of algae in the tank, because microorganisms are gonna graze on that algae. Um, this little tank, I can't really say much on because it's, since it's so small, it's hard to get it, I guess, to that point where it's at equilibrium. I mean, it could already be there, but it's hard to tell, rather. Um, moss is growing in up top. I lowered the light a little bit so it wouldn't be so glare-tastic. That still kind of is, but, I mean, less so. Snails are super important in having an equilibrium. They'll control algae. Um, tiny snails, snail eggs will be food for fish. I mean, even though you don't see it with most fish, like, the dwarf puffer chiefly eats snails, like, pretty much only eats snails, but it'll also eat the snail eggs, the spike tails, some gouramis, even the chellas in here will eat snail eggs. Um, although puffers pretty much decimate snails, so they kind of throw off equilibrium a, li a little bit. Um, clean up my room. Hey, crazy, huh? Um, uh, 
let's see, this one, the Vivariums are a lot harder to get to that equilibrium point uh, because not quite as much microfauna. Microfauna is harder to control in a vivarium. Um, although, if you can see the little white patches, yeah, see that? Yeah, those are springtails. Right, yeah, that stuff. Those are springtails. They're little invertebrates that live in the soil, and um, I toss this tank fish food every once in a while. Um, yeah, vivariums are harder to get to that point because it's not all soil necessarily has um, those microorganisms in it. I had to add the springtails. Um, and this one, at least the aquatic portion, is um, pretty much in total equilibrium, I think. Um, I set this one up back in March, so it's fairly quick. But if you guys can see those, all these little white hairs, basically, those are all tube effects worms naturally growing in this tank tons of them. And this thing, too. I don't know what that is, but it's it's some sort of worm um, casing. So, yeah, having these other invertebrates, having these worms not only provide food for fish, but, I mean, they also help clean up the water. They just... they add to the tank even more. Even more so. There are the fish in here. And hornwort. Fine. Uh, there's not much equilibrium in here because everything is kind of dead except for these couple of plants, but even then, that's in a pot and that's an airplane. Um, this isn't a sealed system. I mean, it's it's got, it's made of screen. It's a lot harder to keep it controlled than in a vivarium setup. Um, that is an empty tank. Uh, and here's the TV. Some of you guys were asking about that. Um, this is definitely a big work in progress. I need to, uh, I need to get the light up in there and kind of seal it some more and get all the critters and everything, um, situated. I'm probably just going to have bugs or something in there. Maybe nothing at all. Um, but yeah, as tanks mature, they'll support fish fry, they'll support microorganisms, um, without you even having to do anything. And I think the less we do things, the more it benefits the tank sometimes. Um, that's why hospital tanks are so important. Because once you set up a hospital, you don't want to ever fuck with the chemistry really in your water other than adding new water you, you really really just don't um, you don't want to ever add any chemicals basically unless it's a hospital tank where you want to try and save your fish maybe it's your favorite fish or something but uh, yeah even then um, but almost all the white clouds in here and a few of the danios are all from f fry that came out of this tank or came out of other tanks um, and they had things to eat, they had various microfauna to eat, and really, you can leave your tanks for a bit and they will take care of themselves. Um, outside of some specialized habitats like like uh, the Rift Lake, African Rift Lake cichlids who uh, require, uh, who don't really have many plants in their natural habitat or many they require a lot of, you know, they require pretty damn good water quality. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, they don't really have the m microfauna, or at least easily accessible microfauna. And all these tube effects showed up naturally. Um, I never fed tube effects to that tank. They just showed up. And I, I take tube effects out of there and feed my other tanks with it. The, uh, no, I don't put any in there, but the 55 and the 5 gallon. Yeah. So I'd recommend you guys to just kick back, not screw with your tanks nearly as much. Um, 